We come from all walks of life, and we all have a story. That's what connects us. These are the stories that make us CCA. The favorite thing about what I do is that I get to interact with the inmates and I get to share my experience, strength and hope and uh, the different skills and tools I've learned about living in a sober life. That's why action speaks louder than words, right? Because I, li I listen to words and I trust behavior. I'm going to watch what they're doing. Doing timelines in the group process, so seeing this one inmate particular lay out all the different issues that had taken place in his life, things that had happened being abused as a kid and that he was willing to divulge this to the small group. You're exactly right. When you get on the wrong roads, that becomes a pattern and it's like we think that's the road there to stay. Right? And that's where we can take, a, take the exit. You guys heard it down there. They were saying things about, I've never really looked at my whole life like this. When an inmate has a, a breakthrough like that, it, it makes me feel really good. I'm Tommy Corman, Addictions Treatment Counselor in Tennessee. I am CCA. My name is Tommy Corman, and I grew up in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, my dad was a fireman. Uh, on the side, he did painting and construction. My mom stayed at home. When I was 15, I was uh, I was coming home from a uh, friend's house. It was late at night, it was about 12.30. As we were coming home, uh, we passed a car um, through the town uh, we lived in. We found out that he had, this man had been bar hopping and drinking, and so he was showing off. And they wouldn't let us pass them um, in the lane. One of the guys actually pulled a gun out of the, and pointed it out the window at us. Through a wet road, we skidded off and hit a tree. It brought the engine in the car and it crushed and killed my friend. And I was in the back seat and that's what uh, caused my injuries was the lap belt. After the car accident and I was out of bed rest, I was still on a lot of pain medication. And so that was kind of my first introduction into le learning to a chemical dependency. Uh, I ended up uh, getting in some trouble and basically um, the judge told my parents, you know, he needs to be court ordered to treatment, so that's what I got. So my parents decided to put me in a treatment program in Memphis, Tennessee called Second Chance. So after uh, 11 months of treatment, uh, I came back to Kentucky when I moved in, uh, back with my folks, and, and life was great, and I was excited about living a sober life. Something that began to happen was uh, making small excuses, you know, and uh, six months later, basically, after a lot of drugging and a lot of running in the streets, I remember walking to a Kroger parking lot and, and calling, asking my parents for help. And so my dad left the fire department at about two, three o'clock in the morning, and he came to pick me up. And when he showed up, he pulled up in the, you know, the abandoned parking lot and uh, just kind of, he kind of opened the door and he put his hand on the dashboard on, on a pistol. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, I don't know what to expect. I mean, I haven't heard from you in two months. I don't even, he didn't even know where I was living. Didn't even know how to get in touch with me. He said, I should, you said you had some problems. I told him I wanted to get sober. He just reached his hand, took his hand off the gun, and I jumped in the truck, and he drove all night uh, straight back to the program. And I just remember the date of, you know, August 12th of 95 is the last, last time I was, you know, using drugs and alcohol, which was over... Uh, 18 and a half years ago. Second time I got out of treatment, um, I, uh, they had an option that you could become a peer staff counselor, and so I did. I came on staff and began to lead uh, many of the groups. One of the stipulations was if you wanted to work there, you had to go to college. So I began to go to school, and that's when I started to go for my undergraduate in psychology, and I went to Crichton College then. And uh, later on, as I, I stayed in school, I went and got my licensure in alcohol and drug abuse counseling and continued to further myself and get my master's in biblical counseling. So this is my wife, uh, Diana Corman, and uh, we met working together at the treatment program and doing groups together. We've been married now 13 and a half years. It was just good to be around sober people and people that were strong and motivated for the same things in life and we really connected doing groups together. He was fun to work with. I was working uh, for an intensive outpatient treatment center in Memphis, Tennessee and a friend of mine knew that and I was looking for other full-time work and 
um, with a wife and three kids who just wasn't making all the, the ends meet. So he called me, a friend of mine called me and said, um, there's a position open for you in Hardeman County. If you think you, you, know, you want it, your credentials um, are equal to what they need. And so I applied and uh, I was eager to, to get started here. I'm an addictions treatment manager and uh, you know on a typical day I'm uh, overseeing the, uh, the housing units for the reentry program at CCA and with that uh, at the RDAP program specifically I have the ATU staff counselors that, that do the group processes. RDAP is a residential drug abuse program and it's to give uh, inmates an opportunity to look at why they're using drugs, why they've been engaging in you know, criminal activity and basis, and then also to relate to other men that have been in the same lifestyle. This is an example of the ABCs, and what this does is helps them look at an activating event, their belief, and their consequences. So they know that um, any types of reactions that they might have internally, that there is an external um, consequence that can take place. And consequences, by definition, can be either positive or negative. Being the addictions treatment manager uh, and part of reentry programs, I see that uh, we definitely want these men to learn some things so when they get back into society they are a better member of their community, to their families, and uh, mainly to themselves as well so they, so they don't come back to prison. I'm pleased that, uh, that you know that the, that door's opened a little bit. They start saying, you know, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want this kind of life. So they start to get a taste of something good and so they'll start going down that road. I'm very proud of the job I do. You know, I'm, I'm excited about what I do and if I saw somebody else uh, needing a job and there was a position open like mine, I would definitely encourage them to apply. And some of the positives and benefits is when you get to work with people, you obviously see that there's a need to help those that are uh, discouraged or down or depressed. And in my position in counseling, you know, I get a lot of opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one or in group settings to encourage those inmates. I would like to be remembered uh, by my kids or my grandkids that, you know, that I had courage, that, that actually my actions spoke louder than words, and that, you know, they can say, you know, that that was my dad, and that they feel proud that I lived the life that I said I was going to live. I'm Tommy Corman. I am an addictions treatment manager in Tennessee. I am CCA. We are CCA.